Oh, whoops. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just having a few private moments with Crafty Bob there. I'll get back to that later. Hello, welcome to my studio. I'm Jolice DeAngelis, and today what I'm going to be talking about is the Card Crafters Tools of the Trade. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working um, with one of these sheets. This is one of my Trifectus cards. It's Vintage Floral 74. And the cup number on this is 151781 underscore 126. That's 151781 underscore 126. Now the 126, that's me. That's my designer number. Cool, huh? And if you notice on this, I also have several other sheets that go with this. This one has a medallion. This one is a couple of alternative toppers with extra tags. This one is tea bag folding tiles and a pyramid version. You can find them all by going to that original cup number and just clicking on the connected sheets button and you'll be able to find them all. They're equal to A4 size basically. And I use my X-Acto cutting board. The reason why I use the X-Acto is because it has imp imperial measurements and metric measurements. Works very well for whatever kind of um, you know, cutting I'm going to do, whatever kind of card, size card I want to make. I also appreciate it because it has this stopper here. Now, I have several sheets of card. Also, it cuts through like 20 regular sheets at a time. So what I can do is I can abut this against there, cut these, and now when I do the next group, it's going to be exactly the same size because it's going to be right up next to there. And then I'm going to move this to 10 inches so that I have my 7 by 10 inch card so when I fold it I'll have it 5 and then I'll just do the same thing. And I'll just do one of these to kind of show you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to score it. Now I have my Martha Stewart scoreboard which don't we everybody loves Martha Stewart. So here we're going to have my Martha Stewart scoreboard and my little score tool here. Of course, you just put it against the edge. It's going to be five by seven, so I'm going to drag it along the five here. And because I'm a perfectionist, I always bring it down a little bit, go all the way up to the top so that my fold or my score comes all the way to the top. And then kind of go up and down it a couple of times. When you fold it, always make sure that the part you folded is the outside, excuse me, is the outside of your fold. So you're going to fold it like that. Now, once I have it folded, I'm going to use, you know, most of us have a bone folder. What I use is I use a Teflon folder, and it has a little bit more weight than a bone folder, but what I like especially about it is that it doesn't leave a shine when you crease things. You know how sometimes you can get just a little bit of shine where you crease it, whether it's doing tea bag tiles or, or origami or whatever. Um, so that's why I like my Teflon. Now the Teflon ones are a little bit harder to find. Usually you can find them, um, for instance, where a book binder, uh, people that bind their own books and so forth. That's where I got mine from. Okay, now I'm going to use, um, this is my card and I prettily stocked it up with some um, pretty coordinating with my sheet. And now let me show you what I do. First of all, here's my sheet that I have partially decoupaged. We'll do a little bit more in a minute. But here's another Martha Stewart tool, a punch. And it's all, it's nice because you can just do your punch right, you know, you can see it on the bottom, make sure it's right in there and just punch it and it pops it right out and there it is. Oh, I got a little tiny speck there that's not quite evened up. So we'll just trim it, nobody will know the difference. Okay, now my have to have item that if you don't have anything else, this is what you need to have for card crafting. This is an ATG gun. What that is is adhesive transfer gun. What that means is it's double-sided tape. Now the easy thing is, if you notice I still have some decoupage elements on here, but I can still use my double-sided tape. And what I like about this is that when I do my double-sided tape like this, it just takes two seconds and it's done. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to mess with peeling my stuff and, and all the extra stages you have. And if you notice here just a little bit, I just went right outside the line here or outside over the edge. All I have to do is just bring that over and that tapes it shut. Very thin tape. And I take my cardstock, and I'm just going to try to make sure I get this as straight as I can and as even as I can on here. 
because I like it when I have just a couple of the corners rounded. It just gives it kind of a nice little feel. So there's the front of my cardstock, but let me tell you what I do. Now to keep my elements in place, I use just a plastic bag and that way, like for instance, this is the pyramid portion. I can just go like this, bring out all my, theoretically, <laughs> it's not coming out, all my layers at once and then I'll have them all at once to use. So that's just a little tip if you'd like to do that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit about when I decoupage something or when I shape my decoupage actually. Now this is actually the second layer of my medallion and I and what I like to use is a spoon. A spoon actually works better than almost anything else um, for my purposes because it just gives a nice rounded even tone to the to the shaping. If you notice I just go like this just shape it up a little bit as I go around here it just kind of shapes that it brings it up now so many times with our um, decoupage we have a tendency to always go under but really try this going up it just adds so much fun and dim more dimension to the card and now I'm going to put on my foam pads I don't use silicone glue because I have chemical sensitivity silicone glue is a little bit better it gets you a little bit more precise for real tiny uh, pieces of decoupage but okay now bring the camera up a little bit here because what I do for this you know how you always get adhesive on your scissors when you cut your foam pads if you have a roll I take one of these mouthwash bottles you can get anywhere and you know you kind of squeeze them and you have one mouthful up here and what I like to do is just take my scissors and dip it in there make the scissors just a little bit wet kind of get off some of the drops go like this cut it and there you are no adhesive whatsoever on the scissors now another thing to keep in mind with this is that with these with this little bottle thing that I use this is great look at the top of this this is really great for like watercolors or anything like that that you're gonna do oops I got a little bit of water on here oh well that'll be all right okay now I'm gonna just put my little layers on here on my medallion and show you my finished card kind of forgot to show you my knife so I'll go through that in a minute here so I'm gonna put that right center that right over the part of the medallion and then the next layer I have going under, I kind of like to alternate my layers a little bit. And that way I think it just gives a little, again, a little bit more of that dimension. A little makes it just makes it a little bit more fun. Now something you can do, sometimes you have a hard time getting these, this little the paper off the back of the foam pad. What I find is if I kind of squeeze a little bit toward the edge there or in the middle, it kind of lifts it up a little bit, a little bit easier to grab it. So I'll put that, that one on and then one more layer which goes down and oh it's just it makes such a great card. It just works wonderfully well. And there you go. A finished card. Isn't that beautiful? <clears throat> okay. Obviously a craft knife always when I'm going to cut something straight across. It's just easier that way. You know you just take your little piece of paper. This is scratch paper but you know but you just do it like that and it works fantastic. Now for some of these other knives, I'm going to show you, give you some advantages and disadvantages because most of us aren't going to be able to have all of these knives in our, in our arsenal, so to speak. But we can, we can use most of them or you can decide pros and cons what you want to use. Obviously the craft knife works really well because you can kind of get around your edges. Another thing I like is the corn, this corner, this, um, I'm sorry, fingertip one because it gives you a lot more control. If you go, you can go really around tiny curves, so those little tiny pieces, it works great. Um, it also works really good for iris folding apertures, fantastic. Now this is a slice. This is a ceramic blade. Um, what is fantastic about ceramic blades, you'll never have to replace your blade. They, they don't dull. It's fantastic. I mean, wouldn't all of us crafters love to never have to replace a crafting blade? Um, and plus another thing I like about ceramics, this little white part right here, you can probably, can you barely see that little white part right there? Um, that's the blade. It's very tiny. But I can go like this with my finger. Here's another one. I can go like this with my finger on that ceramic blade and I will never cut myself. Isn't that fantastic? However, 
it will cut almost everything else. It will cut glass, it will cut the surface of your table. So always make sure you have your cutting mat underneath. In this thing, you hold it like a pencil. Oh, it just cuts like a dream. Just beautiful, beautiful cuts. It's fantastic. I love this one. Also great for iris folding apertures. Okay, now as for cutting out the actual decoupage elements, I love using this scissors. And the reason why I like this scissors is because it's less tiring on the hands to have the spring there. And then I don't have to worry about this part of the scissors ever getting in my way. It's super sharp so I can get into those tiny little pieces. My absolute favorite um, scissors for cutting decoupage units. I highly recommend you get one of these if you do a lot of that. There's the tools of the trade that in my estimation every crafter should have and me along with Crafty Bob wish you a fantastic day. Now Bob and I are going to get back to our private conversation. See you later!